Good afternoon. I'm Karen Von Hippel, the director of RUSI, and it's a pleasure to commemorate International UN Peacekeepers Day with all of you today uh, on the 29th of May. Normally, we would be welcoming you in our venue on Whitehall, where we would have a full day conference addressing uh, different challenges related to peacekeeping. And then at lunchtime, all the ambassadors uh, walk down Whitehall and lay a wreath at the Cenotaph in, to commemorate those who made the ultimate sacrifice for peace and security. Uh, but really the purpose of, of today is to commemorate those who have served and are serving still. In fact, over 1 million people have served as peacekeepers in 72 missions since 1948, since peacekeeping first started. Uh, and there are currently over 82,000 peacekeepers deployed in 13 missions globally. The United Kingdom has 300 personnel serving in four missions, and that number will increase later this year when the UK deploys uh, to Mali. Unfortunately, almost 4,000 peacekeepers have been killed, uh, and last year alone, over 100 were killed. The United Kingdom has lost 106 peacekeepers in the line of duty, and really that's part of the purpose, is really to commemorate all of those people. The theme for 2020 UN Peacekeeper Day is Women in Peacekeeping, A Key to Peace. And it's also the 20th anniversary of the UN Security Council Resolution 1325, which uh, set out the agenda for women, peace, and security. Today, it's my pleasure to uh, e-introduce, virtually introduce, Brigadier General Maureen O'Brien, who is the Deputy Force Commander for the UN Disengagement Observer Force in the Golan Heights. She took up this position in September 2019. She's the first female brigadier in the Irish Army. Um, and she has substantial UN experience uh, in, in many peacekeeping operations. She served in UNIFIL in Lebanon, Minurso in the Western Sahara, UNTET in East Timor, uh, Minurka in Chad, and has also served in an OSCE mission in Sarajevo. So it's really a pleasure to hand over to her and thank you so much for joining us. Hello from the Golan. I am Brigadier General Maureen O'Brien um, and I'm addressing you today from Camp Fouar, which is the headquarters of the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force in the Golan and I am the Acting Force Commander. At the outset I should say that any of the views that I express here today are entirely my own. I would like to share with you my experiences with the United Nations but first I would like to set the context. I joined the Irish Defence Forces in 1981 with five other females and 43 males. What made our training different from other armies at the time is that it was integrated. We did the same training as our male colleagues and within a few years all appointments within the Defence Forces were open to females. Since my commissioning as an infantry officer in 1983, I have held many different appointments in operations, training and strategic planning. In 2012, as a Lieutenant Colonel, I became the first infantry battalion commander in Ireland. As a Colonel, I held the appointment of Director of Communications and Information Services. I have been deployed overseas eight times. Three times to Lebanon with UNIFIL. Once I was, the first time I was a platoon commander, the second time I went over as an operations officer in the Irish Battalion headquarters and the third time was as a senior staff officer at sector headquarter level. I served in Minurso in Western Sahara as an observer. I've also served in the UNTAID mission in East Timor in the joint operation cell. In Chad, I was in Minurkat mission as the deputy battalion commander. I was also seconded to the Organisation of Security Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, for 18 months in Sarajevo in Bosnia-Herzegovina and I was working in the area of defence reform. My responsibilities, my responsibilities in every one of these missions I grew according to the rank and the appointments that I held. On promotion to Brigadier General in September 2019, I was deployed as Deputy Force Commander in UNDAF, but since October I have taken over as Acting Force Commander. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the UNDAF mission and my work here. 
The UNDOF mission was established by UN Security Council Resolution 350 on the 31st of May 1974, after the Arab-Israeli War. The resolution called for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Syria, and the UNDOF's mandate is to maintain a credible presence in the Golan and used our best efforts to maintain a ceasefire between Israel and the Syrian Arab Republic and to see that it is scrupulously observed. We carry out this mandate by positioning our troops in 14 different positions along the Golan Heights, from where we observe, patrol, inspect and report with complete impartiality. Violations of the ceasefire agreement are protested to senior representatives of the Israeli Defence Forces or the Syrian Armed Forces and notified to UN quarters where they are dealt with at a political level. These violations will always also contribute to the U United Nations Sec Secretary General's quarterly report on UNDAF. Today, I lead a force of over a thousand women and men from 10 different nations. 4.5% are females. Of course, like yourselves, COVID-19 pandemic has impacted the mission. However, the impact to the implementation of the mandate has been minimal. To date, we have had no cases of the virus. From late February, we have been implementing a comprehensive action plan. Border crossings, and uh, with other countries are closed and leave has been cancelled. We have built additional quarantine and isolation facilities and I'm confident that our level one plus hospital will be able to deal with at least mild cases of the virus. More serious cases will be medevaced to their home country. Personnel are screened when entering any of our 14 posts. This involves temperature checks, hand sanitation and vehicle sterilization. Movement between posts is kept to a minimum. Important meetings are held using BTC. But our patrols and our observations are not impacted. We can still report as usual. With effect from the 4th of May, the Secretary General has postpone, postponed all rotations of troops and individuals until at least the 30th of June. So both the personnel of UNDOF and their families have made and continue to make huge sacrifices to ensure that UNDOF mandate is fulfilled during these difficult times. Peacekeeping is a risky, a risky business. To date, close to 4,000 peacekeepers have paid the ultimate price and sacrifice in the cause of peace. We should never forget this sacrifice. It is noteworthy though, that over a thousand of these personnel lost their lives through acts of violence. These numbers go beyond the normal or acceptable levels of risk for peacekeeping missions. As the Secretary General has pointed out, UN peacekeeping missions now operate in far more dangerous, complex and high risk environments. Our peacekeepers have been under equipped and under prepared for dangerous environments in which they now operate. So at the beginning of uh, 2017, the Secretary General made proposals to reform the United Nations. The goal of the reform is a 21st century UN focused more on people and less on process, more on delivery and less on bureaucracy. With the background of these institutional reforms, the Secretary General also launched his Action for Peacekeeping, the A4P, which aims to refocus peacekeeping with more targeted mandates, making operations stronger and safer, mobilising support for political solutions and better equipped and trained forces. As Acting Force Commander, I can see some of the fruits of this action plan already, but there is still room for improvement. Measures have been put in place to, to improve the preparedness and response of troops, including the assessment of pre-deployment training, better contingent own owned vehicles and armour personnel carriers, and improved medical support. In terms of performance, I conduct assessments on each contingent. In the last eight months, the mission has been reviewed and, ass and assessed on a number of occasions by UN headquarters. Of course, reviews and assessments are worth nothing if the recommendations are not followed upon. I make every effort to ensure that all recommendations are actioned 
and to follow up with the commitments made by the UN headquarters as well. One of the other reforms committed to in the Action for Peacekeeping is more effective political engagement in support of the military contributions. As I mentioned, UNDOF is a very old mission and is one of the very few military-only missions. It does not have a political pillar. I am not a political expert, but I am required to bridge that gap between this mission and UN headquarters. I do believe that in order to progress peace between Syria and Israel, political engagement is required by both parties. Without this engagement, some could argue that the UNDOF mission is irrelevant. But UNDOF is not irrelevant to the people of the Golan. I am confident that the people of the Golan on both sides of the ceasefire line value our presence. Through our observation, patrolling and reporting, we are witnesses to the challenging lives lived by the people of the Golan, who have experienced war and insecurity over the last decade. When I travel through the villages of the UNDOF area of operations, I am greeted by waves from children, women and men. I know we are doing something right. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the UN Resolution 1325, Women, Peace and Security. The, res the resolution reaffirms the important role of women in the prevention and resolution of conflicts. It urges member states to increase the, the participation of women and incorporate gender perspectives in all United Nations peace and security efforts. As I mentioned, UNDOF comprises 4.5% women. As force commander, I am entirely dependent on the 10 member states of UNDOF to ensure females are included in their contingents. But in some cases, their capacity is limited because some member states do not have female soldiers. For example, currently my military police unit does not have any females. And this does not make sense when you understand that we have both male and female members um, of military members and civilian personnel. After I pointed out this to United, he he United Nations headquarters, the member state is now in a position to provide a number of female military police, as well as MP officers, uh, in, and, and, as well as an MP officer in the next rotation. So I'm looking forward to that. They say you have to see it to be it. Although adding more females to a peacekeeping mission is an important first step. In my view, and in the view of the Secretary General, this is not enough. Just increasing numbers alone does not change the patriarchal processes and procedures that can impede the normal progress of talented female soldiers and leaders. It is essential that junior and senior female leaders are included in all our peacekeeping operations, as they can provide a different perspective and act as role models for others. In general, I have found that female leaders are more likely to question the status quo, are more inclusive and deal with challenges in a more holistic manner. In fact, some have argued that the success of Finland, Germany, Iceland, New Zealand and Norway in keeping the numbers of COVID positive cases low in their own countries is down to the fact that they are led by female presidents and prime ministers. Food for thought, at least. Peacekeeping in 2020 and beyond, this was the theme of your Peacekeepers Day conference had it gone ahead. In the 75th year of the United Nations, 2020 has already been a time of huge disruption, compounded by global pandemic. I know that UNDOF is emerging stronger and better equipped to work together with all parties. It has made us realise how connected we all are how this mission depends on the goodwill of many to succeed. But there are huge challenges ahead of the world after this. The Secretary General said that multilateralism is not only a matter of confronting shared threats. It is about seizing the common opportunities. We now have the opportunities to build back better than it was in the past, aiming at inclusive and sustainable economies and societies. I believe that the United Nations is also learning lessons and will emerge stronger and better placed to act as the forum to realise the ambitions of the UN Charter into the 21st century and beyond. Maybe if the world had a few more women leaders, 
this could be realised sooner rather than later. Yet more food for thought. Thank you. <laughs>